Simulan mong abutin ang iyong pangarap Na magbibigay danga sa iyong bukas Ang suliranin Hindi laging nandyan dapat mong harapin Kami iyong kasama sa bawat takin Magkaakbay nating lulutasin Dito sa Gagabay sa iyong pagkamulat Naway umukit ito sa iyong isipan Maging mapanuri Sundin ang wasto at nararapat Kagandahang nasal ang ipakita Ipadama ang pusong may malasakit Dito sa Fernandino Teens TV Ating harapin ng walang takot Sasamahan ka ni Fernan At dino ang bagong barkada mo Fernandino Tint TV Good morning, Fernandino teens. It is another great learning day. I am Mom Rio Lazaro, your science teacher for today, saying, Life is fun when science has begun. How are you doing, Fernandino teens? I hope you are all well, staying safe, and healthy. Congratulations for almost finishing academic year 2021-2022. We are now in week 6 of our quarter 4 lesson. In fact, we are now on the last lesson of quarter 4 of grade 9 science. You deserve a thumbs up. Even though we are in alert level 1 restriction of the IATF or the Interagency Task Force Management of the Philippines, we should not let our guards down. COVID-19 is still here and we must still comply with the health protocols such as wearing a fitted face mask, disinfecting our hands, and always observing social distancing. Since the pandemic began two years ago, we're spending more of our time staying at home, doing online classes, work from home setups, 
and spending long hours in front of televisions and computers. Can you imagine going through the entire day without electricity? It may not be impossible, but it will surely be difficult. Every now and then, there are new gadgets, machineries, and state-of-the-art technologies being invented and introduced to us. They can be helpful for us to ease our daily activities of living. As time passes by, these technologies offer more efficiency in many aspects. However, without electricity or power, they are useless. Sure thing, electricity powers all our gadgets and appliances at home. It makes our lives practical, easier, and comfortable. Can you recall what electricity is? Have you ever wondered how electricity reaches us from the power plants? What processes does electricity have to go through in order to reach us at home? We will answer those questions as we go through with our lesson. In today's episode, we will discover how electricity is made and delivered to our homes. So grab your self-learning modules, paper, and pen, and join me as we discover the world of physics in this episode entitled, Electricity, a power that empowers our homes. Here are the learning objectives of today's episode. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to, first, Describe energy generation in electrical power plants. Second, describe the energy transmission and distribution from a power station to the community. And third, calculate the electrical energy usage. Before we proceed further, it is important to look back on your past lessons that are in some ways related to our topic for today. In grade 8, you learn about the relationship among three basic electrical quantities electric current, voltage, and resistance. This was also the topic presented to you by Sir Joshua Manzada on his episode on electricity. Furthermore, you were introduced to construct simple electric circuits that led to your understanding of Ohm's law. You also understood and practiced safety precautions in order to avoid electrical hazards such as short circuits through proper electrical connections and proper grounding. And all this relevant information will help you understand our episode for today. Before we dive into the discussion of our lesson, let us have a quick warm-up that will help you unlock and remember some important keywords that we will often hear our fun discussion on electricity. Our first activity is a game you are all very familiar with. Let us play Text Twist. All you have to do is to simply rearrange the letters to help you answer the questions. You may write your answer on a sheet of paper or type your answer in the comment box below. You have 10 seconds to answer. Are you ready, Fernandina Tins? Let's start. Question. What do you call the flow of electric charge or electric current? Very good. The answer is electricity. Electricity is the presence and flow of electric charge. It is a natural phenomenon that can be both invisible and visible. Both matter and energy. A type of wave that made buttons or a force that cannot be seen. Question, what do you call a device that converts mechanical energy to electrical energy? You are correct. The answer is generator. Electric generators are a machine that converts mechanical energy to electricity for transmission and distribution over power lines to domestic, commercial, and industrial customers. Question, what do you call the machines that transfer electricity from one circuit to another with changing voltage level but no frequency change? 
blended? The answer is transformer. A transformer is a device that transfers electric energy from one alternating current circuit to one or more other circuits, either increasing or reducing the voltage. Question, what do you call an industrial facility that generates electricity from primary energy? Splendid! The answer is power plant. A power plant is an industrial facility that generates electricity from primary energy. Most power plants use one or more generators that convert mechanical energy into electrical energy in order to supply power to the electric grid for society's electrical needs. Question. What is a rotary mechanical device that extracts energy from a fluid flow and converts it into useful work? Good job! The answer is turbine. A turbine is a rotary mechanical device that extracts energy from a fluid flow and convert it into useful work. Did you get all the correct answers? What a great job, Fernandina teens! When we return, we will describe how energy is being generated in electrical power plants as well as the transmission and distribution of energy from a power station to the community. Stay tuned and we will be right back after the short break. Ang Schools Division Office City of San Fernando, Pampanga ay kaisa ng Department of Education sa pagsasagawa ng mga proyekto at programa na tumutugon sa mga pangangailangan ng mga mag-aaral. Inilunsad ang Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors upang magbigay ng educational at psychological assistance sa mga mag-aaral, magulang at stakeholders ng division. Kaya... Kung may nais kayong itanong tungkol sa pag-aaral, maaaring magpadala ng mensahe sa Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors Facebook page o tumawag sa mga numero na makikita sa ibaba ng inyong screen tuwing lunes hanggang biyernes sa ganap na alas 8 ng umaga hanggang alas 6 ng gabi. Maaari rin kayong sumangguni sa ating guidance counselors na nagbibigay ng guidance and counseling services. Lahat ng inyong ibabahagi ay mananatiling confidential. Ang nasabing programa ay nagsisilbiling daan upang malaman ang feedbacks ng stakeholders para matulungan ng ating division na mapagbuti pa ang mga sumusunod na programa. Ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Tumawag na sa aming mga numero o bumisita na sa aming Facebook page at magpadala ng inyong mga katanungan. Fernandino Teens TV Welcome back, Fernandino Teens. Going back to my question a while ago, have you ever wondered how electricity reaches us from the power plants? What processes does electricity have to go through in order to reach us at home? To provide electric energy, it undergoes a series of processes before it reaches our homes. These processes include generation, transmission, and distribution. Before understanding these processes, let's study first the different energy sources which can be utilized in generating electrical power. In the Philippines, there are various sources of energy that are utilized to provide electricity to power our households. Literally, Mother Nature provides the natural resource we use to generate power from natural gas to coal, ocean tides to mountain winds, and even the energy from the sun. These sources can be categorized into renewable and non-renewable sources of energy. Which do you think is more environment-friendly? Very good! The renewable sources. Due to climate change, it is being advocated to utilize more renewable energy sources 
than non-renewable ones. As non-renewable sources of energy causes more emission of carbon to the atmosphere. Let us have the first process. Generation A power plant or power station is a facility where electricity is generated from energy sources. There are two types of power plants, thermal and kinetic. They both produce electricity in similar ways, using source of energy to turn a turbine. Electricity generated with steam turbines using fossil fuels, nuclear biomass, geothermal, and solar thermal energy is electricity produced from thermal power plants. Other major electricity generation technologies include gas turbines, hydro turbines, and wind turbines as examples of kinetic power plants. The steps involved in generation of electricity are easier to understand looking at this flow diagram. As shown in the diagram, electricity generation starts getting the various forms of energy sources. These sources supply the energy necessary to turn or rotate large turbines in the second phase. These turbines are then connected to a device called a generator. The generator converts mechanical energy to electrical energy. But how is this possible? In the third phase, there is an interaction between a changing magnetic field and a conductor inside the generator assembly. A magnet at rest or a conductor at rest cannot produce electric current. So current is induced by either moving the magnet or the conductor. This phenomenon is known as the electromagnetic induction. You will study more on electromagnetic conduction in your grade 10 science. The last phase is the production of electricity by the power plant. Now that you are familiar with how electricity is being generated in two types of power plants, let's have an activity and see if you clearly understand our lesson. The title of the activity is Flow of Electricity Production. Here is the instruction. Arrange the following steps in chronological order to show how energy is generated in power plants. Write numbers 1 to 4, 1 as the first step, and so on. Here are the steps that you should arrange. Are you done? Let us check your answers. First, production of source of energy through the turbine. Second, Rotation of blades of turbine. Third, rotation of coils or magnets or generator. Fourth, production of electricity. Did you arrange the steps correctly? Good job, Fernandina Teens. So now, let's further differentiate the two types of power plant, thermal power plant and kinetic power plant. Thermal power plants are operated by heating water in a boiler unit until it becomes superheated steam at a very high pressure. The steam is produced by burning coal, oil, natural gas, or solid waste biomass. In nuclear power plant, Heat comes from nuclear fission or the splitting of radioactive nuclei into smaller nuclei. The superheated steam turns a turbine and moves a condenser, where it is converted to water that can be reused. Examples of thermal power plant can be seen in the Philippines are the Masinloc power plant in Sambales, the Masinloc coal-fired thermal power plant is a 600 megawatt base load pulverized coal-fired power plant. It is located in the municipality of Masinloc, province of Sambales, about 250 kilometers northwest of Manila. 
The plant consists of two 300 megawatt coal-fired thermal power units, each with an identical drum height force recirculation boiler. The plant began operations in 1998. It covers an area of 137 hectares. The Manila Thermal Power Plant in Paco District, Manila. The power plant was composed of two heavy oil, Bunker C, fired units. Unit 1 was commissioned on September 1, 1965, and the Unit 2 was commissioned on October 15, 1966. Owned by the National Power Corporation, each unit can produce up to 100 megawatts. The power plant substantially contributed to the Luzon grid until they were both decommissioned in January 2000. The coal-fired Quezon Power Plant in Mauban, Quezon. Quezon Power Station was originally constructed as a single unit 440 megawatts coal-fired power plant in Quezon Province, which began operation in May 2000. The plant occupies 87 hectares in the municipality of Mauban, Quezon Province, with a 31-kilometer transmission line that links into the National Transmission Network. The Suol Coal Power Plants in Pangasinan Suol Power Station is the largest and most cost-effective coal-fired power station in the country with a generating capacity of 1,200 megawatts. It has been providing electricity to the Luzon grid since 1999 under a build, offer it, and transfer scheme with the Philippine government, which will end in 2024. The Tiwi Geothermal Power Plant in Albay the Tiwi field has an installed capacity of 275 megawatts and is located about 300 kilometers southeast of Manila in the Albay province. Exploration began in 1964 and power was first generated in 1979. On the other hand, we also have kinetic power plants. In kinetic power plants, like hydroelectric and windmill power plants, the wind and the falling water turns the turbines. The water acquired potential energy as it's stored behind the dam. This potential energy is converted into kinetic energy as the water flows through special channels that lead to several turbines. The water rotates the blade of these turbines which then turn large magnet or coils of a generator. The generator then transforms kinetic energy of its coils or magnets into electrical energy. The water then continues its flows through the river for recycling. As we are a country with abundance of natural resources, we also have kinetic power plants that are in use, such as Maria Cristina Hydroelectric Power Plant in Iligan City. Maria Cristina Falls powers the Agus 6 Hydroelectric Power Plant, one of the several hydroelectric power plants that harness Agus River. The power plant has a 200 megawatts potential capacity supplied by a water flow of about 130 cubic meters per second. The Agus 1 Hydroelectric Power Plant in Lanao del Norte. Agus 1 Hydroelectric Power Plant is a hydropower plant operated by the National Power Corporation, Mindanao Generation, with a total output of 80 megawatts. The Burgos Wind Farm in Ilocos Norte. The 150 megawatts Burgos Wind Farm in Ilocos Norte is the biggest wind farm in the Philippines. The first wind project nominated for the Philippine government's feed-in tariff incentive scheme. The Angat Hydroelectric Dam in Bulacan. 
Ang Get Dam is a concrete water reservoir embankment hydroelectric dam that supplies Metro Manila and nearby provinces with water. Pelila Wind Farm in Rizal It was in 2008 when the Department of Energy granted permission to alter energy in creating a wind farm in the mountain slopes of Pelila Rizal. Its purpose is to serve the nearby towns and municipalities of Rizal and Laguna with clean source of energy. It is so great that with the use of natural resources combined with technology, we are able to produce electricity. So now, let's have another activity and see if you can identify what type of power plant is being described. Identify if the given statement, example, or description is a thermal power plant or a kinetic power plant. Write or comment TP for thermal power plant and KP for kinetic power plant in the comment section below. Are you ready, Fernandina teens? Let's start. 1. It uses solid waste biomass and burns coal to produce steam. Good job! The answer is TP. 2. It uses falling water to spin up a turbine. Great! The correct answer is KP. 3. In this type of power plant, water acquires potential energy and converted it in kinetic energy. If your answer is KP, that is correct. 4. Sewell Coal-Fired Power Plant in Pangasinan. Awesome! TP is the correct answer. 5. Maria Cristina Hydroelectric Power Plant in Iligan City. Very good! The answer is KP. Now that you understand how electricity is generated, in both a thermal and kinetic power plant, let us figure out how this electricity travels from power plants to our homes. When we come back, we will talk about how electricity is transmitted from power plants. We will also describe how electric power is measured and learn how to compute your own electrical energy usage. All that and more here in Fernandina Teens TV Season 2. Maya po oras kaya kayo, Fernandinos. Ako pala ay Elwin Arlserano ng City Tourism Office ng Ciudad San Fernando. Ngayon yung bulan na ini, pag masusyan tayo yung National Heritage Month na ating temang Victory and Humanity Upholding Filipino Heritage and Identity. Kambe na nini, may itong karang aktibidades na ng Ciudad apin yung launching ng Bayong Heritage Passport. Ang Heritage Passport ay pinig metong karing proyekto ni kaya katamu siyudad ng pamilya muna ng Mayor Edwin D. Santiago. Anong nu karin makalagelangan ding ega naga ng heritage sites, heritage structures na akit tamu kaya katamu heritage district. Ah kaya do din kaya ni ding importansya do ding mapay na tradition kaya ni siyudad kalupay ni pamangawang parul ang po yung pamangalesa. May ahos siyang heritage passport, uling atin kang dapat gawan, anong nukaran puntalan mula ding at yung passport, at saka ka mag-selfie, kay ba't kanta palto making tourism office, at mamiyalang sticker ka rin ega na ganang apuntulan mong lugar. At yung mong may ngari ang tutong passport. Balo ni Ngeni, panahon na ini, eta mo makain visa lumal, uli na ng COVID-19 pandemic. Kaya naman kimbanwa ngay ni, Agkatan ko lang din bikers tamo, edad 18 hanggang 50. Imbis na lumawot kayo po, di na nyo lang dita ka oras di kaya katamang heritage structures, kaya ni Siudad. Anya naman ka rin mumunang 50 bikers ang makayari kaya katamang heritage passport, may di na lang premium only San Fernando loot bag. Inggawan nyo mo ba ang tamakapag-register, munta kayo mismo opisina na ng City Tourism, yung munisipyo, at saka kayong magdalang metong valid ID. 
Kabila ning kaya yung heritage passport, ating makasipit ang instruction nung nano pa yung dapat gawan. Anya naman ka rin hanggang kapadya, Ken. Nanano ko pa. Tara na! Fernandino Tint TV You're still tuned in to Fernandino Tint TV Season 2. In our discussion earlier, we learned how electricity is generated from a power plant. Since you understood this process very well, it is now the right time to explore the second process. Electricity Transmission From power plants, Electricity is then made to travel along cables and wires called transmission lines. Transmission lines are commonly put up between transmission substations which are regulated by the National Power Corporation or NAPOCOR. Transmission lines may either be constructed overhead on towers or they may be underground. They operated at high voltages, send out large amounts of electrical power, and extend over considerable distance. These pictures illustrate how transmission line looks like. Have you seen them before? They build throughout the country and some of them are owned by the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines or NGCP. But before reaching the transmission lines, the electricity is transformed first to higher voltage electricity at substations. The substations are comprised of step-up transformers. A step-up transformer raises the voltage as high as 138,000 to 765,000 volts. The purpose of raising voltage is to enable electricity to travel long distances. Within the operating area, transmission substations through step-down transformers, reduce the transmitted voltage at around 34,500 to 138,000 volts. This power is then carried through lines to the distribution systems located in the local service areas. All these processes take place during transmission. Now for the third process, electric distribution. The distribution system connects the transmission system to the customer's households. From here, voltage will enter the power or distribution substation. The voltage is reduced by the step-down transformers for distribution. This picture shows how a distribution substation looks alike. Have you seen them before? Here in Papanga, we can see these structures at NGCP substation in the town of Mexico. The lowered voltage will travel through the distribution lines. The voltage will be lowered again by step-down transformers located on the light post to 220 volts. From the post, the voltage passes through the electric meter and enters the home's network of electric wires and outlets ready for consumption. Here in the city of San Fernando, the San Fernando Electric Light and Power Company, also known as Espalapco, is one in charge of the electric distribution in every household within the city since 1931. After understanding how electric power is being generated, transmitted, and distributed, now let us talk about electric power consumption. Do you know that you can calculate your electric bill consumption? But before that, let us know the basis for calculating your electric bill. One of the factors that could be considered is the power rating of your appliances. By the way, Ferdinandino teens, do you still remember what is power when it comes to electricity? You learned the three electrical basic quantities which are current, voltage, and resistance in your science 8. 
multiplying the voltage and current is equal to power. For instance, the power rating of an appliance depends on both the voltage and current. The formula in finding electrical power in watts is as follows. Here are the units used for electric power, electric current, and voltage. For one appliance, the power rating is large in number. So the unit used for combined power rating in a household is in kilowatts, which is equal to 1,000 watts. All appliances in a household may have a combined power rating. That is why energy is usually computed based on the time of the usage of the appliances. The electrical energy is determined by its power rating and the number of hours it is used. In simple terms, we can say that the formula for electrical energy is equal to electrical power multiplied to the number of hours or time. Here are the units used for electrical energy, electrical power, and time. Furthermore, to get the total cost, multiply the electrical energy to the cost per kilowatt per hour. Here are the units used for total cost, electrical energy, and cost per kilowatt hour. Let's have an example for you to try on with your pen and paper. Every afternoon, I usually prepare my uniform for work and I usually use the current through an electric flat iron connected to a 220 volts line that is 4 ampere. Letter A. What is the power input of the flat iron? Here is the computation for problem A. The final answer is 880 watts. Letter B. If the flat iron is used 2 hours a day for 7 days, how much electrical energy is consumed by the flat iron? Here is the computation for problem B. And the final answer is 12.32 kilowatts hour. Letter C. How much is the total cost of using electric flat iron if the kilowatt hour costs 5 pesos and 50 centavos? Here is the computation for problem C. The final answer is 67 pesos and 76 centavos. Did you get the same figures, Fernandina Teens? Well done! Now that we know how to compute for energy consumption, we can somehow take into consideration some tips and measures to lessen or reduce our energy consumption, especially during summer season. And we will have that in a bit when Fernandina Utins TV Season 2 returns. Hindi lamang sa larangan ng pangkabuhayan apektado ang maraming pamilyang Pilipino, kundi maging sa larangan ng pagkatuto ng bawat batang Pilipino. Inilunsad ng siyudad ng San Fernando ang programa Nurturing Environment and System for Thriving or NEST, isang education community pantry na naglalayon para sa isang malawakang pagtulong, pagkantabay at paggabay na ang focus ay ang makapagbigay ng tulong at suporta sa ating mga mag-aaral sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng educational needs gaya na lamang ng school supplies, tutorial sessions, study tips, at iba pang mga pamamaraan na mas lalong makatutulong sa pag-angat ng ating edukasyon. Dahil hindi hadlang ang pandemya sa magandang kinabukasang naghihintay sa ating mga mag-aaral. 
sino-sino nga ba ang mga kalahok sa programang ito? Sa pagtutulungan ng ating school administrators, guro, magulang, at iba pang mga miyembro ng ating komunidad gaya ng barangay officials at sangguniang kabataan ay siguradong magiging mas matagumpay ang programang ito. Paano nga ba ang magiging proseso ng naturang programa? Una, magkakaroon tayo ng isang Facebook group, ang Pampanga High School Nest Education Community Pantry na pangungunahan ng Educational Pantry Coordinator. Ang mga magulang, tagapangalaga at mga guro ay ia-add ng ating Educational Pantry members sa Facebook group na ito. Sa page na ito, maaaring i-post ng mga magulang at tagapangalaga o sino mang miyembro ng Educational Pantry ang kanilang mga kahilingan o requests. Kailangan ding ilagay ang pangalan ng mag-aaral, grade at section para sa mas agarang aksyon. Oo nga pala, hindi lang requests ang pwedeng i-post. Pwede rin mag-post ang mga nais magbigay ng tulong o mga gustong mag-donate. Sabi nga nila, sharing is caring. Pandaan na ang Facebook group na ito ay pribado at posts na may kaugnayan lamang sa page na ito ang maaaprobahan. Mayroon din palang Google Form na ipamamahagi kung saan maaari nating isumite ang ating requests o kahilingan. Paano naman ang mga walang internet access sa bahay? Huwag mangamba dahil merong mga nakalaang drop boxes ang ating paaralan na kung saan maaaring ihulog ng mga magulang at tagapangalaga ang kanilang requests. Sa mga nais namang mag-donate ng school supplies, maaaring ilagay ang mga ito sa tabi ng drop boxes. Maaari ring mag-donate ng mga kagamitan o cash donation kaakibat ang pagsusumite ng deed of donation form. Pangalawa, mahalaga ang ugnayan ng mga guro at ng mga magulang o tagapangalaga sa programang ito. Gamit ang video calls o chats ay ipahahayag ng mga guro ang adhikain ng programang ito sa mga magulang o tagapangalaga. Maaari ring gawin ang orientation na ito ng face-to-face -face, kasabay ng schedule ng kuhanan ng mga module. Gaya ng nabanggit, hindi lamang mga bagay ang maaaring i-donate. Pwede ring mag-conduct ng tutorial session, study tips, at iba pang mga kagamitan sa pagkatuto gayat ng mga aklat o kaya ay gadgets. Ikatlo, ang requested needs ng ating mga magulang o tagapangalaga ay ililista ng ating nest focal person. Ang mga coordinator naman ang mag-aayos ng mga ito. Ang advisors ng ating mga mag-aaral, guidance counselor, at iba pang mga guro ay ipaaalam sa ating mga magulang at tagapangalaga ang petsa at oras ng pamimigay ng requested needs na gaganapin sa paaralan. Sabi nga nila, it takes a village to raise a child. Kaya naman aktibo at iba yung pakikilahok ang inaasahan sa pagsasanib puwersa ng paaralan at barangay na siyang tutukoy sa pangangailangan ng bawat Fernandinong mag-aaral at kikilos upang matugunan ito sa tulong at suporta rin ng mga miyembro ng komunidad. Isang malawakang komunidad para sa isang produktibong educational community pantry ay tiyak na lilikha ng iba yung pagkilos upang maging mas magaan at madali ang pagkatuto ng bawat kabataang Fernandino. Kaya naman tandaan, magbigay ayon sa kakayahan, Kumuha ayon sa pangangailangan. Fernandino Teens TV Hello Fernandino Teens! We're just about done with our discussion on generation of electricity its transmission and distribution. And as promised, here are some corrientipid tips, measure and ideas this season. 
Here are some tips from the Department of Energy to conserve electricity and also save some cost from high electricity bills. Corientipid tip, save electricity, save money. Number one, regularly maintain air conditioners and pan. By regularly cleaning the filters and condensers of a one horsepower conventional aircon unit, you will save 100 pesos monthly. Number two, turn off the lights when not needed. Turning off one light bulb for six hours will save you 25 pesos a month. Number three, Use LED lights. Convert your lightning system from compact fluorescent light to light-emitting diode or LED as it saves as much as 50% of energy. Number four, unplug and use electric appliances. Leaving and use electric appliances on standby still consumes energy. For example, a cathode ray tube television and its digital box on standby mode still consumes 16 watts, which is equivalent to 57 pesos and 60 centavos, wasted electricity in a month. Number 5. Clean your fridge and avoid opening it longer than necessary. Do not open the refrigerator for a longer time since refrigerator door opening accounts for 7% of the consumption Assuming you open the fridge for 42 times in a day. And before we end, let us have a quick recap of all the concepts we have learned today. To summarize the electric generation, transmission, and distribution, let's see the six steps. Step 1. Power plants generate electricity. Power plants generate electricity from different sources. It can be from natural gas, wind, or ocean tides. Step 2. Transformers step up voltage for transmission. The current generated from the power plants is sent through transformers to increase its voltage. Step 3. Transmission lines carry electricity in long distances. Transmission line is the movement of electricity from generating site to substations. Step 4. Neighborhood transformer steps down voltage. The step down transformers now lowering the voltage in distribution sites. The voltage is being lowered in preparation for distribution in the households. Step 5. Distribution lines carry electricity to house. Electricity travels through smaller transmission lines towards your houses. These lines conduct lower voltages of electricity. Step 6. Pole transformer step down electricity before it enters the houses. This is done to ensure that the safe voltage of 240 volts goes into your houses. Here are the formula we need to compute for our energy costs. To calculate the total cost of operating the appliance, the formula to be used is I hope that you learned a lot from this episode and use this knowledge in investigating why our electric bill suddenly shoots up during summer. Is the amount of increase in your electric bill justified by the increase with your electric usage? Now you can try to figure it out by yourself. That's it for Nandino Teens. Coming from a vast source from our Mother Earth, turns into useful electricity that is valuable in everyone's life. And at this point, let us see if you have fully understood our discussion today. You may write your answers on a sheet of paper or type your answers on the comment box below. Are you ready, Fernandino teens? 
Let us start. Number 1. A rotary mechanical device that extracts energy from a fluid flow and converts it into useful work. A. Generator B. Turbine C. Stem D. Transformer If your answer is letter B, turbine, then you are correct. Number 2. The presence and flow of electric current and charge. A. Power plant B. Generator C. Electricity D. Kinetic energy Did you write or comment letter C? If so, you got it right. Number 3. A type of power plant that operates by using steam produced by burning coal, oil, natural gas, or solid waste biomass. A. Potential power plant B. Mechanical power plant C. Thermal power plant D. Kinetic power plant Did we answer the same letter? The correct answer is letter C. Thermal power plant. Great job, everyone! Number 4. Cables or wires that may either be constructed overhead on towers or may be underground that operated at high voltages send out large amounts of electrical power and extend over a moderate distance. A. Transmission lines B. Generator C. Voltage D. Current Is letter A, transmission line, is your answer? Well then, you are correct. Number 5. It is defined as the product of voltage and current. A. Cost B. Energy C. Ampere D. Electrical power If your answer is letter D, then you are correct. Did you get all the five questions correctly? Well, if yes, you're doing great, Fernandino teens. The Filipino mass agonized plea to drop the cost of electricity has been heard. It is well known that our country has a vast source of both thermal and kinetic power. We also have nuclear power plants that can be topped for alternate source of energy. With this, we can carry the promises of our coming administration to find ways to drop the cost of electricity by means of incorporating nuclear power energy as an alternate source of electricity. Therefore, decreasing electric imports and general costs we need to pay. Here are the references used for today's episode. And that is all for today's episode. Thank you for actively participating in our discussion for today. Again, I am Mom Rio saying life is fun when science has begun. God bless and be safe everyone! Thank you.
magbibigay na nga sa iyong bukas Ang suliranin, hindi laging nandyan Dapat mong harapin kami iyong kasama sa bawat akin Magkaakbay natin lulutasin Dito sa Fernandino Pins TV Ang boses mo ay mahalaga Dito sa Fernandino Pins TV Ikaw lagi ang dita Ang mga Na siyang gagabay sa iyong pagkamulat Naway umukit ito sa iyong isipan Maging mapanurin 